Isaac uh, really showed me what Mountain Dew really was. Let's give them Mountain Dew. Before, I didn't even know what Mountain Dew was, and if I, I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> Isaac, I, I was uh, I was wondering it's a pretty broad question, but what exactly uh, is Minotti symbolic for to you in the film? Um, you know, to me, uh, it, that's a great question because, um, you know, I don't really explain it in the film and it's because it symbolizes something I just don't know how to express uh, myself and mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's very inexpressible um, and it, it's a feeling I have with my grandma, with my family, with um, all these different things in life that I hope for um, and, and uh, and I see it growing. It's something I want to see grow, and that, that's kind of how the film ends, and I, I can't really tell you what it is. It's, it's, it's a strange thing. First of all, you don't see Minari growing, uh, growing on a well-organized field. You know, it's the grandmother just carelessly throws out the seeds and it lays down roots in wherever it landed for the sake of this family. And just as uh, Sunja says in the film, you can eat Minari wherever and whenever. So, so I think it kind of represents how Sunja feels and what um, you know Isaac want to, uh, wanted for this family, which is for them to thrive anywhere they land, um, even if the environment is a little rough, just like Minari. That's beautiful because everyone has their own interpretation of it, and it's cool when the filmmaker doesn't even have a concrete answer. It's like, you know, uh, open to interpretation. Uh, Stephen, I... Uh, you're a brilliant comedic actor. Uh, even uh, Glenn, in a lot of ways, was the comedic relief for the first couple seasons, you know. It'll be the fall that kills us. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Um, and then uh, now you've worked with Bong Joon-ho, and given the attention that this film is getting, is that where you saw your career trajectory going? And what does it mean to have cemented your place in Korean-American film like this? Um. Uh, I, I I can never guess what's happening. I uh, I um, I've, I have had the question like, what's next, and like, what do you, how do you choose? And I heard this one quote about that Michelle Pfeiffer said, "It's like you just hold off long enough until you can't stand it, and then you freak out, and then choose the best one of what's available." And um, <laughs> And I was like, that's so real. <laughs> that's so real. Um, that's kind of what's been happening. <laughs> been just uh, so fortunate. And, um, you know, I, I could never see uh, myself having been a part of these things back then. Um, I oftentimes don't even know what I'm capable of engaging in until it happens. And then I freak out and I take it on and I come over it. and. Um, I'm just really lucky that I get to experience these things. And, and, and for this, yeah, I feel even more fortunate that I get to be part of something that I think is um, perhaps something that I wanted to say. And I think Isaac, when, I, when we talk about it, like something that our generation really wanted to say for some time. There's something about the liberation of understanding your parents as human beings that helps you to see yourself a little bit clearer. And um, there's something really cool about that in this film. I was wondering, given the fact that this is um, a film about the Korean experience and so vividly about the American experience, um, how much of it, how much of the script uh, did you feel was representative of your own personal life experiences? I'm in this business such a long time. So when I get script, uh, of course, uh, and then I just um, see the script and it, if it touches me or if it moves me, I decide just to do this role. So to me, it's just uh, doing my job. So I'm not thinking about representing, you know, something or something. 
I'm not like I'm not the trip. 저는 미국에 가서 살아보거나. So I've never lived in the states and I've never been an immigrant. But while talking with Isaac, I realized that we had a pretty similar childhoods. And I have six aunts, and I was able to reflect on um, how they lived their lives in those times. And I realized that I still carried a lot of memories of them through um, performing Monica. And also, my mother had us when we when she was very young and raised us. Um, uh, when she was young, and I was able to really sympathize and understand with her, uh, and um, I realized that she was quite similar to Monica. Alan, uh, you would never make your grandma drink tea, right? Huh? <laughs> No, I always feel so guilty. <laughs> <laughs> you should. That's terrible. Alan, when when you this is your first feature film, when you took on the role, did you have any idea what a sensation it would become and how much popularity it would it would get? No, I I was just expecting it to just be well, a movie. <laughs> But this is really good. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, to put it short, it is it is very very beautiful. Congratulations, guys! I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Jeff. Oh, pretty boy, pretty boy. I'm not pretty. I'm good looking. I suppose my first question should be: Do any of you even like Mountain Dew? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. growing up. I did growing up. I love Mountain Dew. And then like, you know, you get to 20 and it turns on you. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and I haven't had it in so long, but I'm, I'm inspired to drink it now. Yeah. yeah. Plus, Alex, surge. we should go find some Surge. Yeah. Yeah, that's a throwback. 